I would like to welcome to the fourth day of the International Day our students. It's a pleasure to welcome our guest lecturer, Mr. Nino Carvalho, Professor, Marketing Department from IPAM Marketing School for Business from Portugal. The professor will talk about uh, humans and machines, uh, the next step for the relationships. If anybody has question, please write it in the chat box. And after the lecture, lecture we will have a few minutes to discuss these questions. Thank you. OK, OK, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Vicky, Professor Ana Maria as well for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. It's my first uh, participation, interaction, experience uh, of, with any organization from Hungary. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the names incorrectly because our languages, uh, they are too, too, too different. So uh, I wouldn't even say how to, I don't even know how to say Kodolani Janos University. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so thank you very much once again. Uh, yes, please feel free to write uh, your questions, your comments in the chat box. I'll be more than happy uh, to answer it. And of course, I'll try to make this a bit shorter, like 40 minutes perhaps, so we can have a bit of time to discuss afterwards. That will be my pleasure. Okay, uh, so let's move on. Yeah. Uh, so again, thank you very much, all of you, especially the university and Professor Ana Maria, and of course, all the staff, all the group, it's really a pleasure. Uh, unfortunately, we are not able to be together face-to-face, face-to-face uh, -to -face we are in a way, but uh, physically this year, probably we'll be able to do so uh, in the future, hopefully, and let's uh, all uh, hope that uh, in the few months that are to come, we are uh, back together in normal, isn't it? Or the new normal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, very briefly about me, uh, the important thing here, I think, is to, is to know that uh, I always try to make a, a path uh, putting together the academic world and the professional or the market-oriented uh, world. So uh, until 2008, I was a director for uh, the British Council in Latin America and the Caribbean. Then I left the executive world and started my own consultancy practice. And what I'm doing since then is pretty much working as a consultant to uh, big brands, uh, worldwide brands in several occasions or most of the occasions in international projects. I'll talk to you in a bit about it. As Professor Vicky uh, mentioned, uh, I'm also a professor here uh, at IPA. Uh, is an university focused in marketing in Portugal. Uh, also will be, uh, uh, will be very proud to be a invited professor at KDG uh, University in Belgium uh, later this year as well. And in Brazil, I act as a, an academic coordinator coordinating several courses, MBA, postgraduate courses, and also giving classes to my colleagues in Brazil. Uh, the other thing is you see here three flags and just to say that uh, I was born in Belgium, I'm Brazilian, however, I lived in Australia as well, uh, and uh, I'm living in Portugal since 2015. And you probably have heard about American Marketing Association, I'm a member of American Marketing Association, however, I would invite you also to know more about the CIM, uh, especially if you are here in Europe. The CIM is recognized by the countries in the European Union as the most uh, relevant certification in marketing in the continent. So uh, I'm a fellow member of the CIM, sort of the highest rank of members as the only Brazilian. And there are only two here in Portugal, including myself. Uh, and they have a huge uh, amount of content, very well, uh, very good content, very well organized and offered. So have a look as well in those two associations if you work in marketing, communications, PR, advertisement, so on and so forth. Here are some of the brands that I've been working with as a consultant. You probably know most of them. Some might be more relevant either in Latin America or in Brazil, perhaps in Portugal, but they are all multinationals and uh, probably you know most of those companies. 
I also invite you uh, to follow me on social networks if uh, you are interested in uh, marketing, especially the strategic side of marketing and or uh, consultancy. If you want to work as a consultant or even an agency, uh, or if you want to have your own business and you are in the marketing uh, uh, field. So I do invite you to follow and to uh, learn more about those topics in my social networks. Finally, uh, feel free to send me an email if you have questions, if you want, uh, probably I will suggest or comment some books here or some other papers, author, author something like that. So feel free to email uh, and uh, I'll be more than happy to support, to pass you any kind of file document that I have. Just bear in mind that you have two E's over here. Uh, so you have to repeat the E. Uh, and this particular slide deck, so this presentation that I'm giving to you, uh, you, you already have it available. You just can go in your QR code and uh, just print here in the screen. Or if you go to bit.ly slash Nino underscore KGU, you will also be able to download this presentation. So feel free to do so. Now, when you think about this topic, uh, human and machines, what is the first thing that comes uh, to your mind? Just, just spend like three seconds, five seconds thinking about, when you think about human and machines, what sort of pictures do you imagine in your mind? If, if you are closer to my generation, perhaps you may think something about this, isn't it? Uh, and hopefully, even if you are younger, you know Star Wars, you know C-3PO, R2-D2. And of course, if you don't, you should look at these movies because they are great. Not as great as, for instance, The Godfather, but it's a great movie for sure. Perhaps you think that uh, humans and robots, uh, uh, machines in general, will have a very harmonic and uh, uh, caring relationship interactions. And this would be great if we do as well. Uh, they could help us in the work environment. They could help us to work better. They are already doing that, isn't it? If you think about uh, all the things that you do nowadays in academic life or in your professional life, probably you already have interactions, even if you are not that aware you do already have interactions with robots, automations, artificial intelligence, machines in general. And when I'm saying machines, of course, not like uh, only a computer, but uh, uh, I'm talking about those more advanced machines, such as robots and artificial intelligence, for instance. Yeah. Perhaps you believe that I will be kind of more uh, bellic in a more world, uh, world no, sorry, a more warish uh, scenario. So you'll be competing with robots uh, and uh, uh, robots, they are not, not already achieved uh, the, the stage where they can dispute uh, some creative work with us or some more strategic work with us. But of course, if you are, or if you know, and if you look at more labor work, uh, not labor, sorry, more uh, manual uh, work, uh, and those, you know, if you look at industries or fabrics, uh, you see that uh, sometimes robots are already fully uh, 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 in control of those organizations. Just bear in mind, for instance, how Amazon uh, is changing their whole distribution infrastructure throughout the world using robots more and more. Uh, and this is something that at some point may be relevant to you even if you work in a very creative job, if you are an artist, you see experiments of robots producing art, artificial intelligence producing art. So this is something also to be, to be aware of. Yeah. I believe, however, that uh, uh, as uh, you may have uh, experienced before, it perhaps will be kind of, uh, in a way, competing with robots uh, in our jobs, your current job or your future jobs. In marketing, for instance, you probably have heard about things such as programmatic advertisement. Uh, although this started several years ago, it's completely ruined or almost completely ruined by 
robots nowadays, their intelligence. And this will be the same if you do simply um, uh, email marketing work, for instance, or you post uh, some content on social networks. It's very likely that you're already using at least simple ways of automation. So this will be, of course, more and more natural in our day-to-day -day lives. And don't forget that uh, robots, they do not need to be uh, uh, physical things or uh, doesn't even need to look like humans. So we are talking also, when I, when I mentioned robots, machines in general, or automations, never forget that we have, and this is much more important, the whole algorithms, artificial intelligence world, which is actually what is starting to grow and is something that uh, is unstoppable. There will be several good aspects of it, but of course there will be several problems connected to it as well. And this is already affecting us, you and I. You may have think, you may have thought about um, uh, more human-like uh, robots, like Sophia, for instance. And this is a, a possible way. So some companies, some researchers, they are looking at improving uh, robots to transform them into more like a human form, né? such as what they're trying to do with Sofia. In Brazil, we have also some experiments, even with when they go virtual, such as some e-commerce are doing, or even banks with virtual assistants. They try to give a more human shape and there are already several studies uh, trying to understand whether uh, being more or less similar to humans, uh, how this affects the relationships that we have with machines in general. Yeah. However, if you go to the other extreme, taking to Alexa uh, 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 or uh, uh, any other personal assistant, uh, this is a case where there's no uh, a connection with the human body. However, uh, Alexa has already dozens of millions of unit, unit sold worldwide. So uh, this will be more and more acceptable and uh, normal in our day-to-day -day lives. So you see a number of videos online. You can go to YouTube and just type Alexa, uh, 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 Alexa Amazon, for instance, and you see how people are interacting with Alexa pretty much as they were like a person. They're talking to them, uh, uh, just asking questions, ordering products, um, uh, asking for leisure alternatives, suggestions. So this uh, is something that uh, I would I would imagine that most of you already uh, have had connection or any kind of uh, experiment or tried at least some of those <coughs> uh, ways of dealing with interacting with machines. Uh, uh, you can also think that robots will help us, you know, just as very cute uh, things, such as you can see this pet over here. This is a Japanese uh, prototype. Uh, however, you will see this already commercialized uh, in several shops uh, worldwide. So there are robots uh, in forms of dogs, uh, in forms of cats, these sort of things. If you have seen this movie, uh, you will know that this is also a machine, the little bear, but the kid is an artificial intelligence in a body of a machine similar to humans. So when we talk about humans and machines, maybe you thought of some pictures like those. Yeah. I also believe that uh, it's possible that when the first time that we met uh, intelligent life uh, that is not from this planet, I don't know, uh, it may be that uh, aliens, they bring to us here first robots and then themselves. So uh, it's also possible that our contact with a very intelligent machine will be something more dramatic like that. And hopefully we'll not reach that point, especially we'll not reach that particular point from the movie Terminator. Uh, however, uh, the whole army of machines and artificial intelligences that are more and more uh, into our lives, uh, uh, they are uh, causing, in several cases, pains as well, problems as well, even though they do not look like you no know, huge uh, uh, monsters with 
machine guns. They could do harm. They could affect negatively our society. And if you take the millions and millions of people that already have lost their jobs because they were replaced uh, by some form of machine, uh, you probably will understand better than when you think about our own lives because we are still in a stage that was not compatible to what machines nowadays can do, not even the most um, developed artificial intelligence that we have currently uh, in, our, in our lives, in universities, in companies, so on and so forth. However, despite of this whole sci-fi uh, you know, Im images that I have shown to you, the focus here will be for us to talk about marketing and business, those two things together. I don't know if they can be separate anyway. And of course, how robots, artificial intelligence, machines, automations can, are already, and can or could be in the future, impact us in our professional environment. So uh, this, of course, is something that will impact any company uh, uh, at some point in a near future. And as you know, uh, we are already seeing a number of experiments. For instance, you can go to a agency in your own country now, and uh, if you go to the websites, it's not impossible that they will have already, you know, one of those little icons, uh, usually in the bottom right side of the website. And if you click, you talk with a assistant, someone to give you support, but it's not a human, it's an artificial intelligence that's communicating with you. Actually, there are other, other cases in Brazil, for instance, and of course we are talking here, most of you are from Europe uh, and uh, uh, the countries will be much more developed uh, from Brazil in several cases. But in Brazil, we already have cases of online tutors. So you have the professor, then you can you know, solve your doubts, make questions to an online tutor. And those online tutors, uh, in some universities, they are already artificial intelligence. And this is, of course, is causing a huge problem because professors, they are complaining a lot. Some students, they are complaining a lot. So it's kind of a moment of transition between the two realities uh, without artificial intelligence, robots of any kind, and the future uh, where probably we'll find ourselves uh, completely you know, surrounded by uh, different formats of technology. Uh, so let's make some brief definitions over here, just so we, we are clearer uh, in what we are we want to talk about, which is human and machines and their relationships, how they affect our businesses, how can they impact your careers. Some of you will be uh, starting your careers just now in your bachelor courses. Some of you are starting your master's courses or just entering the market. So we are talking about, of course, humans. So that's pretty much us. It's, that's easy to understand. And this is a portrait of a typical uh, family uh, nowadays, isn't it? And of course, we are talking about, on the other side, robots. And again, robots, you have like examples such as this one on Pizza Hut. You can see that perhaps in airports, it's very common, shopping malls, those huge shopping centers, you see those robots uh, are kind of trying to assist you and uh, uh, guide you through the shopping. McDonald's is doing the same, for instance. Uh, you will look at much more advanced artificial intelligence, which is pretty much codes in the end. If you look in a microscope, there will be only codes that uh, we will enable uh, machines to either learn uh, with themselves, with other machines, as well as they will be learning the more they interact with consumers. Uh, and one of the main issues that will guide us through all the present and the possible future as, as landscape of marketing professionals and machines, human and machines, uh, we'll be looking at uh, intelligence, of course, of course, machines. However, you also have examples of very dull, very you know, simple, basic 
uh, uh, robots such as vacuum cleaners. And these, of course, if you go in the corner uh, in an electronics store, home appliances store, uh, even perhaps Ikea, Ikea, or something like that, you will see uh, different options of vacuum cleaners and other uh, home appliances, robots as well. So it's pretty much that, humans and uh, robots. And as I mentioned, uh, I would be surprised if uh, you guys that are in the audience, especially if you are younger, which is not my case, of course, younger than me, uh, you probably use, you, you use uh, those either Android or Apple or other uh, personal, such as Cortana from Microsoft, you'll be using them already in your day-to-day. -day. Probably you talk to your, com to, to your computer, you talk to your mobile in a very natural, in a very uh, 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 easy way, more and more. However, uh, those machines, uh, especially as I mentioned before, the intelligent machines, they are almost in any and every other sector, other segments in our lives. The, in the military, you can see a lot of use of different types of robots, uh, especially from US, China, France, Germany, Russia, so on and so forth. They are very well advanced uh, in this sense. In the health industry, especially now, because uh, of the whole pandemic situation, there will be already a number of hospitals that for simple tasks, such as, uh, you know, I have a number of medicines that every three, four hours, uh, doesn't matter how long it is, I need to give to some patients. So I'll just program a robot and they, uh, this robot will guide, uh, uh, will be <coughs> running through the hospital and giving the medicine, whoever needs that medicine at that point. Uh, you all probably have seen as well robots performing surgeries uh, in, uh, uh, without human intervention in some points or with some doctor, but perhaps miles, miles, countries in countries away performing surgeries with robots. And the cases will be enormously. Yeah? So hotels, restaurants, factories, distribution centers, so on and so forth. The list is pretty much infinite, if you like. Uh, but in order for us, uh, us and I mean we and them, so humans and machines or all of us, uh, to have a solid relationship, uh, we still need some basic conceptual uh, things that will support real relationships. And of course, uh, when and if you study, for instance, relationship marketing, you'll be able to hear more about that. And those four pillars, yeah, so respect, trust, thinking on mutual long-term benefits, yeah, and of course, the interactions, even the micro interactions, the very small interactions that you have with your stakeholders, those uh, four pillars will help you to build solid, strong, uh, value, valuable, <clears throat> sorry, relationships with uh, your company, you as a professional and your different stakeholders. And when I talk about those four pillars, actually just in brackets here, I mentioned relationship marketing. So uh, one suggestion would be for you to read the book, Total Relationship Marketing. And I'll just put here on the chat, the last name of the author. I'll put the full name, Evert Gumeson. The name of the book is Total Relationship Marketing. This is pretty much like the Bible of relationship marketing. And this will be, um, I mean, vital for you in your career. Don't matter, doesn't matter if you work with technology, design, communications, uh, communication, social communications, journalism, advertising, marketing, you need to take care of relationships. For instance, if you manage a brand presence on Facebook, on Twitter, we are talking about relationships, social networks, they are based on relationships. So it will be very important for you to know more about relationship marketing. Probably you have 
a course, a discipline, a subject in your university. But if you don't, just have a look at this book and you like it a lot. So regarding those four pillars over here, respect, trust, long-term, so those, this focus in long-term, so both sides can benefit in long-term and interactions. I want you to uh, kind of bear in mind, particularly the interactions uh, part, the interactions bit or side. And this is because when you are talking about relationships, for them, any relationships to work, even if a machine with machine relationship, this happens via through interactions. Always, both human to humans relationships, machine to machines and machine to humans, we need to interact so we can create things, we can create value, we can sell things, we can buy things, we can solve problems, we can get informed. We need those interactions. And when we talk about interaction, then we can try to focus in this concept and use it to understand how we can improve our, our bonds with different stakeholders, even if we start to use machines in the relationships. So bear in mind this keyword interactions. We'll be back to, to it in a minute. Uh, so we start talking about machines in general, robots, artificial intelligence, different ways where you see nowadays where those things they are operating already. Then we talk about what we are, talk, uh, what we are mentioning here. So humans relationships uh, with robots, what is relationships? Now let's try to understand the machines within the organizational uh, landscape, the uh, environment. So first of all, when you think about from the company side uh, and you put yourself in the owner, the CEO shoes, of course, the decision of doing A or B, investing in robots or not, investing in artificial intelligence or buying a new plant for my factory, any decision will be based uh, naturally, this is comprehensible, it's not a criticism, of course, will be based on profit. Yeah. So uh, all the decisions, uh, although sometimes they could be uh, dressed as a more like sustainable decision, or I, I want to be good to the environment, I want to help a part of the society, although this might be true in some times, even when is the case, companies, especially private companies, they cannot avoid, they, they, they live by definition to give profits to the shareholders, the owners, to the founders, whatever it is. So the decisions they are made, made, they are, they are made based on uh, what will give me more profits. So if I invest uh, in uh, 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 machines, if I invest in artificial intelligence, if I replace everyone that's working in my distribution center, uh, in my factory, whatever it is, uh, with robots, we will profit more. This will always be the case. And there is only two ways for you to increase your profit in your organization. You either uh, will increase the revenue, so the money that you receive from customers and or you need to cut your costs. So you need to do at least one of those two things, potentially or preferably both of them, so you can improve your cost. There's no other way. No other way. I have to bring more money to my company and I have to cut costs. So this is how the decision of investing or not in machines will be, ta will be taking place in companies. And of course, this is like a, a, is a kind of, is a game that is very difficult for us human to, uh, 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 to win because machines, they will be, they may not be now, but at some point they will be, they'll perform better. They will be more productive because they don't need to sleep. They don't need to consume food, energy. They don't feel cold. They don't feel 
uh, 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 they don't get ill, anything like that. So it's a kind of David versus Goliath. Uh, Goliath, I think it is in English. Uh, David versus Goliath dispute, the, us and the uh, artificial intelligence or robots in any format. Uh, so uh, I ask you, uh, do you, before, before we having this point as we are now, when companies, they are thinking how they can, can, can they increase their profits, how they can have more revenue, they can reduce their costs to get more profits using machines, robots, automation, or artificial intelligence. Can you remember any other occasion in our human history where companies were faced with a similar uh, question? So, uh, you know, should I invest in machines to cut costs or to have more revenue? You may have thought about <coughs> the period of the Industrial Revolution from uh, uh, 1760 to approximately 1820, 1830s, perhaps. Uh, so during this period, uh, companies, owners, uh, CEOs, shareholders, they were faced with the same question. Uh, should we invest in those very advanced back then machines so we can profit more? Or should we continue with the humans, machines? Because in that period, they were pretty much, we were pretty much uh, uh, another type of machines in the uh, 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 perception of uh, company owners, managers, so on, so forth. You have, for instance, the, uh, 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 the whole uh, uh, mechanized factory system that is very common. When you think about the industrial revolution, uh, you started to have the steam machine, which allowed companies to grow a lot. So of course, there will be benefits as we did have uh, back then in the industrial revolution. Yeah. So I would recommend you to watch this movie. I think the name in English is Modern Times from Charles Chaplin from the 1930s. And you see that uh, the, the approach of companies towards this issue, machines and humans, was pretty much there are iron or steel, whatever, machines and the meat machines, which are us humans. The focus was pretty much to see uh, uh, even when we start to think about the science of management, uh, uh, the focus was pretty much to see how we can have the human robots, let's put that way, to perform better. Yeah? So we can decrease our costs, for instance, always comparing to what a machine could do. Yeah? And I brought to you here some uh, uh, interesting. So uh, you have both of them doing uh, the very beginning of the 20th century. You have in blue uh, things that were happening in companies in general, particularly if you look at the management side and in, uh, uh, in green. I just put here uh, for comparison uh, what was happening in marketing. Yeah, so you have uh, those three guys, you probably have heard about them, Taylor, Fayol, and Ford, which was like the, the grandfathers of the scientific management, uh, when the science of management started to be discussed, uh, you very, uh, it would be very nice for you to read more about the theory of times and movements, and you see perfectly how the concern of managers back then were to understand how they could, uh, what they need to do to have us humans to perform better as we were machines, pretty much that men, we were machines. Yeah, so they were looking at us and uh, they were uh, writing uh, how many, how long should we take to do a task? What kind of movements should we take to do some tasks? So let's say that uh, they, would they would say to me, uh, Nino, first you have to take this part with your right hand, put in the box, look at the other side, move like that, bend your knees, put the box in the table to your left, was pretty much like this, a script, so you could, like a programming script, so you could perform as machines. 
That was that was a hundred years ago, not so long ago. In marketing, just so you can make this parallel, uh, uh, people were were starting to uh, uh, create the marketing science as well, what we call the marketing thought, in comparison to the marketing practice. So this was in 1902. Uh, we started to have the first courses in the U.S. At least that's what we have uh, uh, we have uh, so far in terms of research. And some years later, uh, some years later, uh, we already have some courses and books with the name marketing on it, as we know today, because marketing for quite a while was kind of a synonym for uh, commercializing or commercial thing or trading, something like that. Marketing only gained this uh, mean, as we know today, as a substantive instead of a verb from 1906, 1910, something like that. So those things were happening when we, I will go back to this slide, we were compared as meat machines. Back then, this guy, an engineer, as most of the other, like Taylor, Fayol, Ford, all engineers, so Percival White, 100 years ago, he was already talking about, guys, we are, we are very concerned here about being more effective, being more productive, putting those machines in our factories and producing, producing, producing almost you know, 24 seven. However, the center of everything, the heart of organizations should be their customers, their clients. Yeah. Of course, a hundred years ago, uh, people only concerned about you know what you see in movies, factories, machines producing, producing, and, you know a huge demand. So anything that you produce will be sold anyway. So when someone come uh, uh, came to the to the to the group and started talking about we should focus on the customer, of course, this guy was not a visionary back then, but he was kind of a lunatic. Uh, during his time. And only later, uh, we found out that probably he was one of the first uh, 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 professionals uh, in our history to be concerned about putting the customer first. And this is important because now, a hundred years later, we are still thinking about several things instead of the customer in the center of our decisions. Although we talk about customer journey, uh, customer experience uh, and customer value, those beautiful things. If you actually go and try to look at real concrete examples, very rarely you see some company, any company that is uh, 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 essentially really uh, deeply focused on the customer. Yeah. And if you take uh, 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 some uh, some so-called sweatshops in Asia, even in South America, surely in Africa, you see that we are living the things that we thought uh, that were uh, finished, stopped back then in the Industrial Revolution, we're still living them. Uh, you can look at YouTube in a documentary, in a French documentary about Google uh, and this sociologist, this French so <coughs> sociologist, He's pretty much showing that Google, although they have video games, free food, so on and so forth, manages the company and the employees pretty much as Taylor and Fayol did a hundred years ago. Yeah. That is because, of course, I can understand that it is not wrong that companies need to profit. Uh, so this is understandable. They are private companies. This is good for the economy, for a number of people in society. So fine. However, uh, there's a difference, you know, between uh, focusing only on profit and focusing profit as a consequence, as being an actual part of your environment, of the society, contributing with the society, so on and so forth. Yeah. So there's no mystery. There's no mystery. You should do as we are trying to do, or that engineer tried to uh, uh, say a hundred years ago. Yeah. If you want to be successful in uh, 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 nowadays where we are thinking about artificial intelligence and robots everywhere, either physically or virtually, like a virtual assistant, something like that, we don't need to 
do anything else but to focus on uh, 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 the customer. We need to do uh, 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 what marketing tells us to do several years ago. Uh, the focus, the heart, the center is always or should be the customer. Uh, and because, because even in our discussion here, machines, robots, automation, artificial intelligence, uh, even though uh, we are discussing the, those things, the technology side is the least important. Uh, is the least important. Customer is always important. And who is the kind of professional or the department that is responsible or should be responsible for the well-being of the customer in the companies? Of course, it should be marketing. Uh, marketing, if you take a number of important authors, consultants, professionals in marketing, such as McKenna, 1991, marketing, marketing is everything. Druck, Drucker, Peter Drucker in the 60s, yeah, companies should focus only in two things, marketing and innovation. Yeah. Then uh, Levitt in the 60s as well, marketing is to attract and retain customers. Yeah, I'm taking older examples on purpose because that is marketing. Yeah. So if we're talking about techno not technology, we are doing that because companies need to profit and those robots will help more directly or more indirectly. They will help companies to do some things with their co customers. So those customers will be more inclined to invest, to buy, uh, to relate with those companies. So we'll be going back to what we have, uh, uh, we are talking about here, which is the human side customers and the core of relationships, which will be the interactions. Uh, everything is about the interactions. And interactions uh, with companies and stakeholders, such as customers, interactions, they are their responsibility uh, or they should be the responsibility of marketing. Uh, marketing is the department, the profession, the area, uh, which ideally uh, are is prepared to deliver, relate, talk to, uh, 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 bring, convert customers to my side here in the company. Since the 80s, so 40 years ago, marketing is very well advanced in studying those interactions uh, since the 80s. And I'll show to you now a model, a marketing model that is a bit uh, is less older, né? which is the service triangle. Né? And I'll write this down over here. Although I think I have put the, the reference service triangle. Uh, and you'll be able to look at uh, this model. This is pretty much showing that I have here uh, the company represented by whoever are the decision makers. I have on the other uh, 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 angle here of the triangle, the clients. Yeah, so whoever is your client now, who will be or could be your client in the future, and of course, uh, who is representing the company to the market or to the clients, which will be the employees. <laughs> and those employees could be, of course, the company employees could be like a, a, a partner that I hire to, for instance, use as customer service in my company or to put the internet cable in your house, probably you don't see like Vodafone, but it's some third party company hired to support you as a client. Or of course, when you are interacting with a bot online on Facebook or on a website, anyway, you are talking about the employee side. So is whoever is representing the company in the interactions with the clients. Now, if you go further in that triangle, you see that when the company communicates, talks to, relates, promote things, try to sell something to the clients, they are doing what we call external marketing. It's pretty much the important here. Companies, they are making promises. Yeah. So if you think about social networks, websites, billboards, TV ads, um, ads in magazines, radio, whatever it is, 
is the company making promises to their clients. Those clients, clients impacted by those promises, they will at some point go to the company and try to see whether that promise, uh, I, uh, the promise is, uh, 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 we have a very good marketing course at KGU University, you can enroll, enroll here. This is a promise. Yeah. And then the clients will go to the website, they will go to talk to a KGU employee, or they go to talk to some KGU uh, professor, something like that. So they will pretty much via that interaction with the customer and the company, they will see whether the company is actually delivering the promises that they make. Uh, and in order for these employees over here to be able to properly deliver the promises during the interactions, the management, the company needs to provide support to employees. So provide a good system, uh, the system I mean like computer system, software, uh, uh, information, empowerment, training, internal communications, so on and so forth. So the company will provide whatever support is necessary. So these employees here, whoever they are, will, during an interaction, they will provide and deliver the promises that were made by the company. This is a very important uh, model for you to learn, for you to know more about, and you should look. Actually, uh, I'm always with this book close to me. It will be in Portuguese, but it will be this book. The name is Services Marketing, and they have three different authors. So is Zeit Hamel, Bittner, Bittner, and Gremler. However, if you look to another book from Lovelock and Wirtz, and I just put here in the chat as well the name, these other two authors, particular Wirtz, and you can look at him on YouTube as well, he's talking a lot about artificial intelligence and robots because of how this whole ecosystem over here is already and will be increasingly more changed by the machines and artificial intelligence entering in our markets. In all, nowadays, in all of those sides over here, we already can see the uh, impact of those automations and artificial intelligence in our lives. So let's again focus in here on this part. That this bit, when clients, they are interacting with the customer, with the company, sorry, this bit is so important that we have like a, a formal name, which is service encounters. It's like the scientific name, but the market, the professionals, the executives, they also gave another name to this moment. Is the moment of truth. Moment of truth. Because it's so important that everything that the, companies, the company represents uh, will culminate, we have a climax in the interaction. During this interaction, I can either support everything that the company is saying, I can raise in the customer mind the profile of my organization, but I also can destroy the reputation of my organization. That's why the interaction between customers and companies is so important and we call it the moment of truth. And this interaction, could be a huge interaction, yeah, like very important and very long and very complex or something that we are doing now. So we are living now a moment of truth. Yeah. Invited by the university, which make, made to you a promise. So we have a great, great event, great professors here, is our schedule and you can join and you'll be nice, so on and so forth. This is the promise. And now you are interacting with, I'm not an employee, but I'm representing as a professor that was invited to the event, representing the university. And now you, we are living the moment of truth. I can either support and you'll be okay, satisfied with the promises that were made to you, I can, oh, this was great. I never heard about KGU. Now I know about it. I want to do a course there. 
this would be nice or what if these guys the type of professor that i will see on kju this was my last the first and my last uh, attempt to learn more about this university this is very important uh, so this is where this is where we need to focus when we're talking about humans and machines. It's not a technological, technological side, which is pretty much the reality now. Companies, they are concerned about the technology, the potentials, potential platforms, uh, solutions, softwares behind it, if they are more advanced, artificial intelligence or not. So the technology side, how much those, those cost and how many people can I replace for instance, if I use your solution, the other solution, they are simply forgetting that those machines will help directly or indirectly the interactive marketing. And this is where the magic for each either side will happen. Right? So this should be our focus. And I will show to you a number, a number of very current, like this year, last year, two years behind researches that are uh, taking place from marketing, mainly sometimes management, sometimes other uh, 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 lines of thought or schools or fields, uh, very recent research. You wouldn't imagine that, and companies surely wouldn't imagine that when they put a robot interacting with a human being, they would need to have concerns such as, what if my artificial intelligence that is learning with other customers and with other machines, what if uh, 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 this artificial intelligence is start to demonstrate prejudice? They never thought about that, but that happened some months ago. An artificial intelligence is started. Yeah. They were programmed to learn and they were programmed to make jokes, yeah, to get, uh, you know, to learn more about the customer and to interact with customers. And because they were learning about a particular segment of clients, they started to make uh, racial jokes in the, the artificial intelligence, in the interaction with customers. And of course, this is something that probably you, want, you, you will not want to happen in your case. What will happen when I put a robot servicing a patient in a hospital? Yeah, and this again is a real case. It was a father in an ambulance yeah, with his kid, four-year-old kid. This kid, uh, he had autism. So he was like having a crisis, no desperate and yelling and everything. And the hospital had a machine to provide support to the parent. Make no sense. You have some people that have, they are afraid of machines. So those things, how to recognize even sometimes subtle differences of different accents, different sexual, sexual orientation, uh, differences uh, be, because of different social or economical backgrounds. This affects a lot the customer experience, the interaction, and of course, the success or the failure of companies. Huh? Then, uh, but, just, yes. Sorry, Professor, we have to finish the lecture now. Uh, now? I'm so, sorry for the interruption. If some of the students has question, please, okay. uh, you can answer the questions. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Thank you all, thank you again for, for the opportunity. Sorry, I was a bit late, there were, there were three slides left, no, no, anything that, uh, nothing that is important. And of course, I'll be able to share with you, as I mentioned, the slides, you can download it. So if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to, to answer. And thank you very much again, Professor Vicky and Professor Ana Maria for the opportunity.